How will 2020 census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. How does the 2020 census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov.
This episode of the Grand Rising Show was brought to you by A Talkness Assembly, where the real work is done. A Talkness Assembly is a gathering of the minds that do the work. Now, for many of our first time subscribers and first time visitors, you may be wondering who A Talkness Assembly are. You can find this information about our mission statement and our core values on the website at attacknessassembly.com forward slash about. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising up indigenous American voices by using genealogy, also known as family history or your family tree, which is the study of families and the tracing of their lineages and history. Genealogists use oral interviews, historical records, genetic analysis, and other records to obtain information about a family and to demonstrate kinship and pedigrees of its members. Our core values are the foundation of our company, which is essential to our success and serve as a lens through which we evaluate every business decision. Those core values are, but are not limited to, integrity, which is knowing and doing what is right, respect, which is treating others the way you want to be treated, responsibility, which is embracing opportunities to contribute, and servant leadership, which is serving the common good. Now, at Atoxinous Assembly, we have a couple of goals here. And our first goal and foremost of the reason why we do everything that we do is to ensure that we help you do your genealogy and connect back to your tribe and find out where you are from. Everything that we do from the standpoint of the Grand Rising show and all the information that's posted on the website is dedicated to that one specific purpose, helping you find your genealogy, find your relatives, find your family so that you would know exactly who you are. And if you choose to, tie back into your tribe, whether that tribe is a Native American tribe, an American Indian tribe, whether it's allowing you to determine which house in Africa that you belong to, or what clan of Scandinavia or Europe or France that you belong to. Either way, our goal is to do just that, help you find out who you are so you know exactly where to start. We are not here to tell you who you are, and we're not here to tell you who you are not. We're just here to help you discover your, your beginnings. Another one of our missions is to help you become financially independent so that you can help your generations for the next seven generations and be able to put a stable foundation for you and your relatives. And if you should choose to use this information that we provide free of charge to help not only yourself, but your community and your tribe, then we will do everything in our power to make sure that gets done as well. And remember, our goal here is to make sure that we help you get exposed to this information to put you in the best situation possible. So now what I'm going to do now is return it back over to the panel to see if there was anything I missed. And I will go ahead and get set up so we can now uh, get ready and get digging into this information. Panel, take it away. Warning, warning, warning. Hard hats, pickaxe, shovels, boots, required.
are live. Peace, peace, grand peace, rising, peace. everyone. Grand rising. Peace, 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 peace. How's everyone that's rising? The bone. Shout out to Brittany. Shout out to Gabrielle and family. Shout out to James Flames. Shout out to Giovanni. <laughs> Shout out Carrie Bay, Copper Indio, Danielle, TMH, LJ Free. Peace, y'all. Peace to the chat. So how's everyone rising? Sorry we was running a little late. That's rising. So how's everyone? And how was everyone's night? Good, good, and good. And even better. And e- yeah. <laughs> and even and even better. I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. So yesterday uh we started talking about opportunity zones and we're gonna talk about them a little bit more today. But uh what we covered so far, uh what are your thoughts on it? How do you feel? Well, I feel um actually motivated to make sure that not only do I understand and know going in I feel good about in investing to reinvest in my community um and seeing how how far it goes how how just seeing how far it goes I'm I'm definitely I'm motivated to see how many people get involved and how it um, expands. Mm-hmm. You mean this is for us? Yes, us. Just an example of another program. And this one allows us to take our tax dollars and reinvest it back in our communities and to be able to make a profit that becomes tax deductible so we can turn it back around and reinvest again. I mean, to me, it seems like uh, different keys and mechanisms to becoming self-sufficient. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems like to me. Mm -hmm. And why not? I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I do not see anything wrong. I'm seeing nothing but positive things. Invest, reinvest, uh, self-sufficiency. Yeah. And also, if you don't do it, somebody will do it for you. Yeah, and that, oh, go ahead. No, just that statement alone, that it, for me, um, I don't know if scary is the right word to use, but that's kind of scary because if I don't do something, that is true. Somebody else will. If I don't step up, somebody else will. And I know what I want to do and how I want to contribute and how I want to help, but I don't know the next person that sees that opportunity they may not be thinking the same way. They may not have the same um, thoughts of menta- or, or mentality. So yeah, you, that statement, that statement, if, you know, if I don't do something, if we don't do something, somebody else will, that's kind of scary because that's part of the reason why, that's part of the reason uh, behind some of the things or a lot of the things that we're dealing with today. Somebody else saw an opportunity because somebody else didn't step up. I'm just saying. Well, just say it. Okay, that's it. That's what's up. All right, I'm gonna get ready to do these shots. Shout out real quick. Okay, Grand Rising, Celestial Love, 
Copper Color Ancestor, Phoenix Rose, Tiny Ofo Ofofo. Check the other chat real quick. Grand Rising Feather Dragon, That Boy Wig. And that's everyone I see at this moment. And as I see more, we'll call them out. So like we said today, we're going to uh, continue on Opportunity Zones and bring out some more information and basically letting you know how to invest in them and a little bit more about them. So those who are interested can start today uh, using this information to get together, forming corporations or co-ops, to start reinvesting in our communities. Oh, uh, someone had the link to post in the chat. Or if not, I can go get it. Okay. Um, I got the link. I'll post it in the chat. Okay, I don't have Twitch, so I can't put the link in that chat. I got it. I'll drop it in Twitch. Thank you. Whenever y'all are ready, we can get started. All right, I'm back. My bad. You reading the first one? Uh, yeah, whenever y'all are ready, yeah. We're going to start with the first link. Gabrielle, you want to page for page it? Or uh, um, subject, subject for subject? You know what? I just realized... I got three different web, what? <laughs> We're on the uh, HUD, the HUD PDF. The one, the first one that I posted right under the, um, the Zoom link. Um, hold on, I think I put the wrong link in the chat. Hold on. Don't click it, y'all. Yeah, don't click it, hold on. Yeah, 16 windows open. That ain't right. Okay, I got it, my bad. Mm-hmm. Grand Rising Big Nelson. All right. The HUD one, right? Yep. Are you sharing your screen? I'm not on the right screen. Or are you about to, right? <laughs> okay, I'm sharing my screen. Give me a second. Um... Copy HUD. Copy HUD. He's there, buddy, in the chat. Both yeah, chats. I posted him right. in the chat. Oh, yeah, Bones got him. Okay, thank you, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I realized I had two windows opened up for the same link, and uh, one window opened up. I confused myself. Okay, I am sharing. Give me a second. Share, share. All right, can my screen be seen? Hmm. Say that ten times fast. Can my screen be seen? 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 Can my screen be se
and my screen be nope. No, that's no. Nope. No, <laughs> no. I, I had to think about what it was gonna sound like <laughs> I say it fast. No, nope. I'm surprised you said it me. the right way the first time. You not getting me. <laughs> <laughs> we Almost had me. Ad-libs. Almost had me. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny boxes. I was about to say, I don't know if you can read this with the zoom out, but the screen has to be shared somehow. So I would say, uh, I, I can see mine. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, they can see it on the uh, on the screen on the show as well. Well, I think the problem is, can Gabrielle see it on the screen? <laughs> What's trying to read? Can you see it, Gabrielle? I'll read the int- uh, the uh, the box at the top if it's, if it's on the screen already. Excuse me. The box with the picture. I'll read that one. You can intro us. Opportunity Zones Toolkit, Volume 1. A roadmap to planning for economic development within Opportunity Zones. An Opportunity Zone is a powerful new toolkit. Mic check. A powerful new tool intended powerful new tool intended to stimulate investment in distressed communities. Harnessing this tool to support short and long-term community objectives requires careful and thoughtful planning. This document provides a roadmap to help communities plan for potential investments in opportunity zones by understanding local needs, aligning community assets, establishing regulatory tools, and financing incentives to support investments and forming partnerships toward equitable and inclusive community development. This roadmap serves as an introductory guide for local jurisdictions to plan for economic development within opportunity zones. It summarizes core components of a comprehensive forthcoming opportunity zone toolkit, as well as resources on opportunityzones.gov link, that explore these components in greater detail. Introduction. Gotcha. Opportunity zones were created as part of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts. Job Act. Jobs Act. And Opportunity Zone is defined by the Internal Revenue Service as an economically distressed community where new investments under certain conditions may be eligible for preferential tax treatment. Localities qualify as Opportunity Zones if they have been nominated for the designation by the state and the nomination has been certified by the secretary of the u.s treasury via his delegation authority to the internal revenue service opportunity zones are defined by census tract boundaries and per federal law state chief executives governors nominated the census tracts to be certified and designated as opportunity zones by the department of treasury in addition to the tax cut benefits that align to these designated census tracts, the federal, state, tribal, local, and territorial governments are also aligning resources to opportunity zones. Together, public and private investment resources can be leveraged for economic development in these communities. Whew. The White House Opportunity and Revitalization. I knew it was coming. Okay. The White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council was established in December 2018 with Executive Order 13853. The council is chaired, okay, chaired by U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, Secretary Ben Carson, and led by Executive Director Scott Turner. It comp- comprises a variety of federal departments and agencies, all tasked with targeting, streamlining, and coordinating federal resources so that they can be used to their fullest potential in opportunity zones and other economically distressed communities. Qualified opportunity funds are a new private investment vehicle authorized to aggregate and deploy capital, capital into opportunity zones. Qualified opportunity funds will facilitate impact investments for investors and for the community, and tax benefits derived from these investments will encourage investments in opportunity zones. U.S. investors are eligible to receive certain tax benefits on on realized capital.
capital gains that are reinvested in opportunity zones through qualified opportunity funds. More than 8,700 census tracts were des ugh, des designated <laughs> as opportunity zones across all 50 states, the District of Columbia and five US territories. For communities with increasing housing insecure, insecurity, wait, for communities with increasing housing insecurity and growing economic inequality, an opportunity zone designation provides a chance to shape strategies and policies that harness this powerful incentive while serving the needs of current and future residents. Communities across the country must prepare for potential investments in opportunity zones and leverage support. By thinking beyond individual transactions, communities can align, direct, and leverage these investments towards transformal community outcomes. You know what? I don't know who they picked to put these articles together, but they be playing around with the dictionary. Mm -hmm. They be in it, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they be in it. Like, hold up, hold up. I got another one. Man, they be messing around with the dick day for real. I get the you don't need all these letters. <laughs> okay, this is serious. My bad. No, flip it. Into <laughs> over words, over the words, nothing else. Mom, you can't say that. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, Shout out to little double cousin. <laughs> All right, we are on the overview. I'm sure you guys can see it with your view if you're looking at the screen. Um, and they have a roadmap to the right, to readiness. Roadmap to readiness. Roadmap. Establish and partner. So, <clears throat> overview. This roadmap introduces core components for transformational and inclusive community and economic development within and around designated opportunity zone census tracts. It will help communities to align, target, and leverage resources from the federal, state, tribal, local, and territorial governments, private industry, and philanthropy. Shout out. It is designed to assist communities in understanding and engaging with economic development in their opportunity zones and in planning strategically for investments. The roadmap is organized around, for, around four imp imperatives. <clears throat> Number one of the four imperatives, understand needs and opportunity zones. No, understand needs and opportunities in opportunity zones. Say that 10 times. <coughs> Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> Con communities must have a deep understanding of the needs uh, and challenges within their opportunity zones to properly leverage potential public and private investments. So what do you think that means? Communities. Communities, a deep understanding. So you, they're saying that communities have to have a deep understanding of needs and challenges? So this would mean if, I mean, and this is what I take from just that um, sentence mm -hmm. alone, is that the communities would need to come together. Every Everybody in the community would need to be informed and, yeah, that's what it and looks have like. Have an understanding of what this actually means and how it benefits them. Like, if that doesn't seem like a small group, that seems like the entire community has to yeah. know. It says the the communities must have a deep understanding of the needs and challenges with challenges within their opportunity zones to properly leverage potential public and private investment. How will 2020 would census data that be that used? Also they would also Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That that's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. Exactly. But that's not all. It's also well, used yeah, by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. Shape your future. Start yep. here. Visit Such 2020 How does the 2020 Census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. Shape your futures. 
start here. Visit 2020census.gov. How will 2020 census... Where there are more people, there are more needs for public service. That's why the census is used by the government to anyway, inform funding okay, decisions never. each year. But that's not all. By nonprofits to inform yeah. services. So, this requires deeper and broader engagement with residents and businesses projects. and key stakeholders. Understanding how the population to understand changes new, helps us shape the nuanced needs unit, of industry across sector, the country for the future. Start residents here. and the 2020 census dot gov. There are 25 mm. seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by popular state get the right amount of seats. Align and leverage place-based assets and resources to facilitate and steer market investment opportunity zones provide a unique opportunity for local jurisdiction growth in specific industries and address overall community needs and housing market conditions. It is critical and capacity be aligned with community needs to realize the full benefits of development and investment opportunities. Number three, establish policy tools and incentives to promote equitable and inclusive growth. Communities, oh, wait a minute, that's not the same sentence. Establish policy tools and incentives to promote equitable and inclusive growth. So communities can ensure that financial investments and opportunity zones have the desired impact through policies and incentives that promote inclusive and equitable economic growth for existing residents and businesses, expand ac access to opportunity mitigate displacement risks and incentive investments focused on social benefits. So who are they talking about? Is that a few different groups of people? Yes. So we have equitable, equitable economic growth for, I say that 10 times fast, <laughs> equitable economic growth for existing residents and businesses. Hold on, so the residents and businesses are getting, okay, hold on. Expand access to opportunity in opportunity zones. Mitigate displacement risks and incentive, incentive, incentivize investments focused on social benefits. What are social benefits? What are some social benefits? Um, what is that? Social benefits. Let me click on the links, Gabriel. Mic check. Um, one, two, one, two. What happened? No, I'm good. No, we good. Number four. Partner with aligned organizations to support equitable and inclusive opportunities. Oh. Uh, hmm? Social benefit is a total benefit oh. to society from producing or consuming a good or service. Social benefit includes all the private benefits plus any external benefit of production consumption. If a good has significant external- How will 2020 census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population just, changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. Yeah, be shape your future. <laughs> Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. Yeah. How does the 2020 census affect <laughs> representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population. And an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. How will 2020 census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, 
by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. How does the 2020 census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. Are you going to be looking up what community capital stack is? Philanthropy consists of private incentives for public good focusing on quality of life. Structured giving through from foundation is slowly growing, although public data on the philanthropic sector is sparse. Okay, um, the philanthropic sector is supported by philanthropic funding and the philanthropic <laughs> sector can exist to carry out philanthropic activities. The goals of philanthropy and the philanthropic sector are to promote the well-being of humankind by solving social problems. Charity is different from philanthropy. <sighs> What's the sector so they again? Haven't, so the, I guess they haven't <clears throat> um, come up with a specific definition or expansion to the word. So they use the word and just explain around. <laughs> yeah, use it in the definition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, nah, we don't do those. We don't do those. That's like, nah, <laughs> you don't even know what your own word is. What's wrong with y'all? Webster. Okay, and nah, then nah, that's cool. Let's see. Community, community capital stack. Well, let me read it. Yeah, just get it right, and I'm gonna uh, read it. Okay. I'm gonna read it while you're looking it up. Uh, man, did I lose my face? No, I didn't. Gotcha. Community capital stack. Partner with a line. Okay, no, where we at? My bad. <laughs> uh, creating this community capital stack will help. Oh, well, that explains it all. Okay, Clarissa. Um, it's all of those things stacked together. Partnership uh, will help ensure. Will uh, what is it? Will help to ensure sustainable partnerships are. Hold on, wait a minute. Creating this quote unquote community capital stack. I'm getting all these notifications, man. Stop it. Sorry. Creating this community capital stack will help to ensure sustainable partnerships are formed and actions are taken to leverage investments in opportunity zones over time. Man, that took me a minute to figure it out. Um, Gabrielle, can you uh, confirm capital stack, please? Community so community capital. capital stacks can include debt, debt, equity, grants, and even municipal bonds by stacking all forms of capital. Um... refers to the legal organization of all the capital placed into a company or secured by an asset through investment and borrowing. So say, say that again. Okay. The capital stack is an important concept for evaluating risk and assessing investment opportunities. So that question that um, that you asked yesterday, um, that was on the questions and answers, when it asked, mm -hmm. can you, that word, oh, I don't even remember the word, but um, it was the difference, like if it, it talked about, um, let's say you your mortgage is more than what the property is valued at. And so you put the property into an opportunity zone and it become the moment that you put it into an opportunity zone, as long as it hadn't been previously put into service under opportunity zone, the um, property now um, gets invested in to increase the value so that it's not upside down. So I guess the community capital stack would run a line align with that. So it's invest, it's um, assessing the risk of the value of the property versus the debt on the property, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I could okay. be wrong. That's just how it makes sense to me. All right. 
So, Gabrielle, let's uh, move to your link. Uh, let's see. That was the introduction and overview of Opportunity Zones from HUD. Uh, but you had an interesting uh, link on how to invest in Opportunity Zones <clears throat> and options to get started. So I think we should uh, have a go at that one. Okay, I got it out. And this is from, uh, what was that, Fundrise.com, I think? Yes. Fundrise.com, how to invest in Opportunity Zones, options to get started. Man, I like a how-to. <laughs> Look at them houses down. I like them houses. Where, where, where is this neighborhood? What is this? What is this? Huh. I'm trying to sell 51 homes, Gabrielle. Huh. Come on in. We ain't got to be in Little Rock. Shout out to Little Rock. Wait, what was the number 51 homes? That's like what? 10 acres? Uh, What was it again? Uh, what, what was, was it? Four, four houses or four or five houses per acre? Something, something to that effect? Bones got the confirmation on that. You know, I can't yeah. remember that. I'm trying to, I, I trying to remember because it was like, but if you did trailers, you could do, was it like 10, 10 trailers? 10 trailers, four houses. Okay. Tangent. My bad. All right. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. We're talking <laughs> about opportunity zones. All right. Right. Thank <laughs> you. The new unique set of tax and here we go with the dictionary. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the new unique set of tax incentives offered under the Opportunity Zone program, many investors are now wondering how to invest in Opportunity Zones themselves. In addition to considerable immediate and long-term tax advantages, Opportunity Zone investments offer wider access to tax incentives. Unlike tax credit programs of, of the past, Opportunity Zone investments come with significantly fewer restrictions, which opens up access to the new investment option. Despite the benefits of, uh, despite the benefits of Opportunity Zones, this newly created investment territory is unfamiliar to most investors. In this article, we explain the basics of the Opportunity Zones, their tax incentives, and outlines way outline ways to invest through an opportunity fund. First, let's look at what opportunity zones are and why they are created, why they were created. How do opportunity zones work? The opportunity zone program was created under the investing under the investing in opportunity act, which was part of the larger tax cuts and job act of 2017. The act was designed to encourage private investment in economically distressed neighborhoods by offering investors access to new capital gains, tax incentives in exchange for placing qualified investments in opportunity zone communities through a new investment vehicle called an opportunity fund. Opportunity zones were created under a nomination and certification process. State and US possession state and U.S. possession governors, as well as the mayor of Washington, D.C., were able to nominate up to 25% of census tracts with their, within their jurisdictions, which met low-income requirements defined by Internal Revenue Code IRC Section 45DE in states, territories, and districts with fewer than 100, 100 census tracts. Up to 25 census tracts were eligible to be nominated. Hmm. Governors and the mayor of Washington, D.C. were also able to nominate up to 5% of non-low income tracts, which met other income and, and geographic requirements. So this didn't just cover areas that are considered low income. It covered other areas that probably didn't have any... Um, um, growth. Today, there are more than 8,700 qualified opportunity zones in all 50 states in the U.S., the District of Columbia, and, the, and in five U.S. possessions, which over approximately 12% of all census tracts in the U.S. Um, current opportunity zones received their designation in 2018 will retain that de designation for 10 years. 
So for the next 10 years, those areas that were nominated as opportunity zones will stay opportunity zones for 10 years. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So for the next, well, yeah, for the next eight Who's years. That, that, 14? So that's why it's 2026. Yeah, okay, it was 2016, uh, okay. Okay. How does the Opportunity Zone program differ from tax credit programs? Mm -hmm. Several tax credit programs intend to encourage investment in low-income areas existed before the creation of the Opportunity Zone program. Tax credit programs such as the New Markets Tax Credit Program and Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program generally rely more upon government agencies to function and are more costly to administer. Tax credit programs are also subject to annual congressional approval and or tax credit allocation authority, which are limited in supply due to the nature of tax credit programs. So Congress is involved in that. Okay. Because the tax credit system limits the number of credits which can be issued each year, there is an intrinsic limit on the number of investors who can participate. <clears throat> okay. And the total amount of dollars that can be invested into the development of a community under these programs. Opportunity zones are different from these programs in a few ways. The biggest difference is that the Opportunity Zone program doesn't operate through a tax credit program. Instead, the Opportunity Zone program is regulated by the, by the two IRC sections which were established with the passage of the Investing in Opportunity Act, IRC section 1400Z through one and 1400Z, oh, I'm sorry, 1400Z-1 and 1400Z-2 regulate the Opportunity Zone program and its components. 1400Z-1 governs Opportunity Zones and 1400Z-2 governs Opportunity Funds. Hmm. Because the Opportunity Zone is regulated through IRC sections, regulations are less restrictive and burdensome for investors. There is no limit on the number of opportunity funds that can exist, which means that there is no cap on the number of investors who can participate. Or, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, keep going. Okay. I thought it was done. There is, you said what? I thought it was done, but I was going to say repeat that, please, but I'm going to go on mute. Okay, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read that part again. There is no limit on the number of opportunity funds that can exist which means that there is no cap on the number of investors who can participate or the amount of money that can be invested through an opportunity fund. I'll read that one more time and it's in it. There is no limit on the number of opportunity funds that can exist, which means that there is no cap on the number of investors who can participate or the amount of money that can be invested through an opportunity fund. Also, unlike un existing programs, opportunity funds can self-certify without prior approval from a government agency. Now, you know I'm gonna ask you to repeat that one too, please. Also, unlike existing programs, opportunity funds can self certify without prior approval from a government agency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, is that a hot link? You yep. played too much. Oh, I don't oh, we need I came back on all this self-certified. Yeah, I know, right? And it's a hot link too. Don't play around now. Oh, that's what I was smelling? Uh-oh. Mm hmm Hold up. This is a page on self-certification or is it going to a bunch of other stuff? Or you got to find it on this page. It says it goes to, it breaks down what qualifies. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> you got the stuff that required. Yeah, you got required. 
the required types of capital gains that qualify for investment tax form required for individual investors which taxpayers can make an investment and win bruh what's going on guys what's happening okay. I, I'm, I'm coming back to this later no nah, that's I crazy need, we might have to say that though yep got you <laughs> this means that opportunity funds are managed entirely in the private market with the administration of the funds falling solely on the shoulders of fund managers rather than government agencies or investors. Now that's curious. Let me repeat that. This means that opportunity funds are managed entirely in the private market with the administration of the funds falling solely on the shoulders of fund managers rather than government agencies or investors. Um, if I'm reading that correctly, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, we're responsible. Yeah, I ain't gonna pass this response. Nope, y'all wanna invest, y'all wanna get involved in this? Okay, be responsible, handle your business. <laughs> handle your B.I. Therefore, the availability of opportunity funds open for investment is not artificially limited. Instead, it's limited only by the number of opportunity funds offered in the private market and by the investor requirement of each individual fund. Hmm. What tax incentives do opportunity zones offer? In exchange for investing in qualified opportunity zones, according to opportunity zone program regulations, investors can, can access significant tax incentives exclusive to opportunity zone program. To access these tax, tax benefits, investors must invest in opportunity zones specifically through an opportunity fund. When an appreciated asset is sold or otherwise divested, an investor realizes a capital realizes a capital gain, which is typically a taxable event. If an investor reinvests reinvests that realized capital gain into a qualified opportunity fund, they can defer and reduce their tax liability on that gain. Additionally, they can also potentially realize all capital gains earned from their opportunity zone investment tax free. Here's a look at all the capital gain tax incentives that an investor can access through an opportunity zone investment. All right, first bullet point. Investors can defer capital gain taxes on earnings from many types of investments up to 2027. In order to defer tax liability until 2027, an investor must hold the opportunity fund investment through December 31st, 2026. If the investment is sold before 2027, the capital gain moved into the opportunity fund investment will become taxable the year it is real, it's realized. By deferring tax payments, an investor can hold onto their capital longer and use it to boost earning potential to a greater degree than they then degree than they then they would have been able to had i'm botching that up hold on it was to me then that day the okay by deferring tax payments an investor can hold onto their capital longer and use it to boost earning potential to a greater degree than they would have been able to had they been liable for capital gain taxes the year that they gain the gain was realized huh investors who hold an opportunity fund investment for at least five years prior to the end of the deferment period december 31st 2026 can reduce taxes owed on the capital gain investment into an opportunity fund by 10%. If the opportunity fund investment is held for at least seven years prior to the end of the deferred period, the tax liability owned on this capital gain can be reduced by a total of 15%. Earnings from opportunity fund investments held for at least 10 years can qualify for permanent exclusion for capital gains taxation. This means that opportunity fund investments can inspect. This means that opportunity fund investors 
can expect to pay zero capital gains taxes when they realize appreciation from their opportunity fund as long as they have held the investment for 10 years or more. This set of tax incentives available of this set of tax incentives available exclusively to opportunity zone investments offers investors a new powerful way to improve tra- tax treatment of capital gains earned from several types of investments. However, due to the fact that the opportunity zone program is intended to encourage positive growth within economically distressed communities, there are restrictions on the types of investments that an opportunity fund can hold. Whew, okay. <laughs> Somebody playing around with these dictionaries for real. They did not have to make up these words. <laughs> you out here being verbose. Man. You ain't got to make no speech, man. <laughs> for real. <laughs> How we invest, what we got to do. Okay, which opportunity zone investment qualify for an opportunity fund? To qualify for tax incentives outlined above, opportunity zone investments must be made through a qualified opportunity fund. A qualified opportunity fund is a U.S. partnership or corporation that intends to invest 90% or more of its holdings in qualified opportunity zone property. Qualified opportunity zone property is limited to interest in a partnership that operates as a qualified business in a qualified opportunity zone. So that's a business in an opportunity zone on a track that was nominated as an opportunity zone. Am I, am I hearing that right? Bueller, Bueller, anyone? No one? Repeat that last one. So the when it says interest in partnership operates as a qualified business in a qualified opportunity zone, that means a business that's a business on a track that was nominated as an opportunity zone. Not the business itself, but probably the building, right? Or even a business that decides to take their profits and invest in this opportunity zone. Got you. Got you. Okay. Stock ownership of qualified businesses who operate, whose operations are based mostly or entirely with opportunities within an opportunity zone. Huh, that's interesting. Properties such as real estate located within an opportunity zone. So that's business, stock investments, and property. Right? Because what did we all read yesterday? that it does not have to be a cash investment. Correct. That it can be raw materials, property. There are regulations governing each type of qualified opportunity zone property. And the regulations governing the first two types of qualifying investments pertaining to businesses are similar to those found in the enterprise business zone regulations. However, the regulations that govern the third type of investment property are different. What is this? Oh, 26 US code 1397C, enterprise zone business defined. Oh, okay. Let me go back. (laughs) To ensure the property invest that, to ensure that property investments improve the neighborhoods in which they're made, there are limitations on the types of real estate investments that qualify for inclusion as as qualified opportunity zone property. 
in general, opportunity funds can invest only in the construction of new buildings and the substantial improvements of existing buildings if an opportunity fund invests in the improvement of an existing building. It is required to invest at least as much into the improvement of the building as it paid to buy the building. For all property investments, development of the building must be completed within 30 months of purchasing the property. Huh. But you know what you're getting into before you get into it. Yep. Uh, as previously mentioned, one reason why the Opportunity Zone program offers greater access and sub simplicity is due to the fact that Opportunity Funds can self-certify without prior prior approval. With that freedom... One more time. That part, just one more time. Not a problem. As previously mentioned, one reason why the Opportunity Zone program offers greater access and simplicity is due to the fact that opportunity funds can self-certify without prior approval. With that freedom, though, the responsibility of ensuring that an opportunity fund abides by all regulations and therefore its investment can re receive preferential tax treatment falls on the shoulders of the fund administrators. You can self-certify, but you're responsible. Hey, you said you picked to run it. Huh. As you can see from the previous sections, there are both time and investment constraints that investors must follow in order to access all tax incentives available to Opportunity Zone investments. Fortunately for investors, the Opportunity Zone programs is designed to encourage investments both through reducing red tape for investors and through exclusive tax incentives. Here are the steps to invest in Opportunity Zones. Number one, invest the realized capital gain into a qualified opportunity fund within 180 days of realization. No intermediary is required for this transaction. An investor can invest directly into an opportunity fund themselves. Number two, indicate that you've rolled over your capital gain into qualified opportunity fund when reporting income taxes to the Internal Revenue Service, IRS, through the IRS form 8949. This is required in order to be able to defer and potentially reduce capital gain taxes. And we read why, look, hey, even you can even go back. If you didn't realize it before and you realize it, you can still go back. Number three, pay deferred capital gain taxes when they become due. If the opportunity fund investment is held for the maximum deferred payment deferment period, which ends December 31st, 2026, taxes will be due in 2027. If the opportunity is held for at least seven years prior to the end of the deferment period, taxes owed on the gain can be reduced by 15%. As described above, if the opportunity fund investment is sold prior to the end of the deferred deferment period, taxes will be due the year that the gain is realized. Number four potentially pay zero capital gain gains taxes on returns earned from your opportunity zone investment. If an opportunity fund investment is held for at least 10 years, an investor can expect their returns to be permanently excluded from capital gains taxation. If the investment is held for less than 10 years, an investor can expect to miss out on tax exclusion benefits on earnings and incur a tax liability upon realization of gains. So it's better to keep it in there for the 10 years than try to cash out early, right? Yeah, especially if you look at the long-term gain. Yeah. Because you can also, you're allowed, if you keep it for the 10 years or past the 10 years, then you can turn around and sell it 
at the retail value of it. Right. Not at the not at the low cost that you got it. So whatever the market value is, the fair share market value at the time, you can get that back. So yeah, I mean it would make sense. Let it mature all the way out before you uh touch it. Hmm. And they've got a chart. 2019 to 2029, 10 years. So this is a program that is not going away. So they letting you know it's available. Yep. Again, if it's, it's what you choose to do. Complain about it or take action and make a difference. Yep. In terms of reporting to the IRS, an investor only needs to self-report their opportunity fund investment on their income tax return using a single form. In terms self -report of- Self-report again? Yeah. Look at this self again. Use responsible. That's like governing yourself, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, absolutely. In terms of property investments, unlike a 1031 exchange, no intermediary is required to invest realized gains into an opportunity fund. This reduction in regulation can help speed up the investment timeline and reduce the possibility of obstacles with, within the 180 day reinvestment window. Additionally, the absence of an intermediary can reduce costs for investors. Huh. So not only does it reduce the time, it reduces the cost. Yep. Oh no, it reduces regulations and the cost. Yep. Sounds like it's helping somebody's funds and somebody's funding in somebody's pockets. And somebody's stress. Yeah, somebody's stress with regulations, yes. Yep. Next steps, next steps in getting started. Thanks to the exclusive set of capital gain gains tax incentives available under the Opportunity Zone program, Opportunity Funds offer long-term investors to a new way to potential earn. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I botched that up. Thanks to the exclusive set, 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 set of cap gains tax incentives available under the, under the Opportunity Zone program, Opportunity Funds offer long-term investors to a new way to potentially earn significantly better returns than they would following a traditional investment path. While Opportunity Funds are limited in, in what they can invest in, they are currently few, there are currently few limitations on the types of capital gains that can be invested in opportunity funds. As the first real estate investment platform to, wait, as the first real estate investment platform to create a simple, low cost way for anyone to invest in real estate, Fundrise has a history of embracing new investment structures that offer the potential for lower fees and higher net returns for our investors. We create the Fundrise Opportunity Fund to offer investors an effortless way to assess high quality real estate properties located in the most promising opportunity zones with strong long-term growth potential across the U.S. In Los Angeles, Papa. Okay. In Los Angeles alone, Fundrise has invested or committed approximately $100 million in neighborhoods in and along the areas now designated as opportunity zones. Our technology enabled investment approach coupled with our partnership with leading expert, expert teams devoted to opportunity fund management enables us to take a nimble and cost-effective approach in investing in opportunity zones nationwide. Um, are you interested in what your after tax returns could look like if you're, if you invest in an opportunity fund, use a calculator below to see what your after tax returns can be in the short term and long term. So 
looking at this chart. Um, hold for five years. You invest 23,000 and hold for five years. Your return is 26,000. Hold for seven years. You invest 26,000. Your return is 29,000. Hold for 10 years. You invest 30,000 and your return is 39,000. So basically potential additional returns over 10 years your return would be 9,000, yeah, $9,000. So you invest 25,000, your expected annual return is increases by 6%. basically giving you an idea on what your returns could be. You invest 50,000. You know what? Mm -hmm. Hold it for 10 years. Your return is 18,000. Almost close to half. So what so happens? What happens when you Huh. Now you can go through USDA to get funds to obtain, to get property for farming. Well, you can go through several programs through USDA for farming, then turn around and go to HUD. Take that same money. If you're investing in specially tracks that are deemed opportunity zones. I mean, this is an, yo, Grand Rising, the Big Hawk, and Pamela Hall. Grand Rising, Pamela Hall. Grand Rising, James Gilmore, and Macadon One. Grand Rising. This is, hold on. So I can go to USDA and HUD, ask for funding, take that funding, and invest it into property and or businesses and then or take land. That profit, then take that profit from said land or businesses and reinvest in the community to make another profit. If that's right, what you were like, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I can, without coming actually out of pocket, without stressing myself, like how do I, hey, I, I'm asking for this funding. I'm asking for- And that's, and that's business. Yes. See, one of the biggest mistakes in our community that we make with businesses, especially when we start our own businesses, we try to fund it out of pocket, but right. that's unrealistic because you still have everyday needs and responsibilities and you just added a new one on. Right. And if you study business, no successful business runs from out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. If the capital for you to maintain said business is based on you working another job, then your growth is limited before you even start it. Hmm. That's why you even see millionaires and billionaires. A lot of them have the hard assets, and they'll, but they'll still go get a loan to do business. You don't want to spend the money out of your pocket. And they get loans knowing that they can access these programs, get these low interest rates, <laughs> with the intention on letting it sit for 10 years. So imagine if we did this as a community. You're talking about a hundred grand. One of our communities spend that, spend way more than that in a month. So imagine if even 30% of that is being reinvested. If 30% of what's spent in our neighborhoods on consumerism is if we put it back in our neighborhoods, and I'm just talking 30%, look at the change that it'll make instantly. I mean, I was told a long time ago, a lot of people judge you on how and where you spend your money. If you're not putting nothing up to build or to save, then people really don't take you serious. What they say, put your money where your mouth is. But if you're talking about changing, you're talking about 
built in better communities, but you're not willing to come together and, and, and finance your own communities. And, and I'm talking like community wise, not individual wise, that when we come together, our numbers give us more access. As an individual, yeah, you probably have a hard time with a credit score. But now, multiple individuals come together as a co-op or a corporation or a nonprofit. Now that doesn't hinder you anymore. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can attack this to actually get a benefit, not just for today, but moving forward as well. Program has just started and they already got funding for 10 years. And again, this is just one program out of thousands. It's just amazing what you can do with a little bit of creativity. What you done came across over there, Gabrielle? Um, that's the end of this link. I'm trying not to click because I am taking consideration that I am sharing. So I know how uh, tangity, clickety, tangity I could get. But, but I got a phone. <laughs> but no, um, this... I really do appreciate being able to see um, the different ways to, or what, what would it be, stressless ways in seeing how to receive funding, participate in programs, and establish um, not just self-security, but also community security, if that makes sense, um, to see how legacy actually can be. It can come into fruition, if that makes sense. It's a, it's, it's, it's promising. It's positive. That makes sense. And again, all it takes is the same link that we pulled yesterday, going in there and seeing what tracks were nominated, the, um, the PDF um, where it tells you, okay, these tracks, these tracks were nominated. You put that track in, you can put, you even have to go off of that. Just put the address in. If there's a area that you're interested in, even if it's your neighborhood, put that address in and it lets you know, it breaks it down. Yeah, I was about to say, you can start with your own address and put it in and it'll yeah. tell you. Start home. Well, what's that saying? Um, everything starts at home? Mm-hmm. I mean, what's not to love about the potential and opportunity to own your neighborhood. Right. I mean, literally, to literally have a say so on what goes on in your neighborhood. I mean, this is these are the things that when we didn't know that we complained about, the things that used to get the best of us, but now we know. And all it, again, all it takes is us just doing it, you know, that. There's no magic pill, magic spray or anything. No tall man around the corner waiting with a suitcase full of money. No, it's going to take us rolling up our sleeves, getting our elbows and hands dirty to get this done. Right. But the promising thing about it is the numbers, the history, the stats shows us by us activating. It does not take long and will not take long. Again, look at the programs that we covered that they don't open up until April, May, June. That gives relatives enough time to sit down and actually go through business plans and concepts and ideas and put together 
things that can last the test of time, things that can change our conditions, mm-hmm. personal and community wise. But then again, does it shock anyone that so far, all the entities that we were told to stay away from, seem like all the entities that got the programs to help you become self-sufficient, ain't that something? Well, you talking about uh, government programs? Like the IRS, like people like the IRS, oh no, this, that, this, that. Oh, yeah, USDA, oh, that's government. By the IRS. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, hood. Oh, no. That's Section 8. That, that's food stamps. That's housing. Oh, that's these all, are the things that we would section. never talk. Yeah, that's the only section in Section in the uh, hood. Okay. They just picked the arbitrary. Mm-hmm. Uh, arbitrary 8. They like 8. Infinity. It says how opportun... You know what? Okay. Whoa. I mean, they ain't fooling around today. They're like, I hear what you're saying. I know. What is you saying? No, they just answered the question. They said it's on you. <laughs> no they're way. Like, we hear this, they're like, we hear these programs every day now, y'all. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, we hear her talking. Like, she's on like, time. Look, dogs ain't got no lips. I was on peace to the chat. <laughs> Rearranging yeah. stuff, moving stuff around, we get moved around. It's all you. <laughs> that, that's awesome. <laughs> Even they that's telling awesome. the relatives, like, listen, y'all, it's on you now. What you uh-huh. do now? <laughs> if it was us, we would be doing it. We still yeah. kill. For real. But again, it's it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to make sure a lot of the scars that that we still hold on to to our childhood are the things that didn't have to be. And we know how it feels. So it gives us a chance to make sure future generations don't have to feel that way. And we can't, and it's not going to be everyone, but at least there's an opportunity for those who want it to not have to go through it. So I mean, what... Oh, go ahead, Gabrielle. No, no, no. I was just, I just realized that they, this, this particular business, when you come together, that's what they did. And they're telling you what they did. And I I say this because these are, they're service providers. So they linked up with these businesses to be able to break it down. Like, look, this is what we did. This is how you can do it. If that makes sense, you can go through us or you could do it yourself. Apartment renovation, commercial renovation. And this is just on a commercial aspect. This isn't even just, this isn't um, an example giving with communities and homes. Just saying. Okay, they got a a PDF download. Let me see what happens. And basically tons and tons of information that you can download, read, at your own leisure to learn more and more about these programs if you're interested in them. Ooh, it's an investing guide. Hold on. Is it thinking of? Come on. I'm going to put this PDF link in the chat. Yeah, you can. 
I got it on screen, so yeah, you can drop it in there. So if anyone else is interested in it, they can go ahead and get it. And think about it. Even a benefit for people who talk about they don't want to pay taxes. You can take your profits, turn around, invest it in your community, and it's tax free. <laughs> they don't know how to be tax free. Ain't that a ur wouldn't that be an urban Indian non tax? <laughs> oh man, bones and cheeks. Come on now, man. This is it ain't even Friday. Well, that it is, but you know, it ain't Friday, Friday. You ain't had to do nah, that. I would just, I, I mean, would you just know, I have, we've heard the Indian is not to be taxed from some people that probably don't know what they're talking about, but maybe that's what they meant. But I don't think that's what they meant because I never heard them say any of this. I, I don't hear opportunity in community. It's more like, I uh, mean, aren't there. Europeans that came over here set up their corporations and institutions and don't pay tax. Uh, mm. Technically, the NFL doesn't pay tax. They're a nonprofit organization. The military is a nonprofit organization. Uh, right, tax free. Mm. A lot of these Fortune 500 companies have their nonprofit foundations, private or public. A lot of your uh, super chains build their businesses in our communities. A lot of these uh, people hire people from our communities. So, yeah, I mean, it seems to me that they have been using us to become tax exempt. For lack of a better term. Am I looking into this too deep? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking like you think you. I, I got a question. With me. So, go ahead. Going along with the um, some people saying that the American Indian is not to be taxed. I mean, they also say they are not to be enumerated. But I saw a census track a few times yesterday and today when we talk about these opportunity zones and a few other opportunities with the FSA, USDA. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the census. So how? Okay. This seems like it's solving a problem like three ways. Not doing the census is get guaranteeing resources it's guaranteeing there. that you will not be counted when it's time to give some resources in your neighborhood. That's and all not, it's doing. And not, not only does it guarantee that you will not be counted, what happens when you want to participate into programs and you weren't counted? Um, who are you? What 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 you doing? Oh, now you want to participate. I could be wrong. That's just me thinking out loud. No, but really, what sense does it make to tell your people not to participate in the census? Uh, what? You believe that you're high in from the government, but you have a cell phone with a Google address. We can even go further back than that. It's 2020. You got a birth certificate, so they know you're here. You have a social security card. You work a nine to five. So basically, you're just eliminating yourself, your community, your people from being counted and having a voice. It's got to be. I mean, come on. What are we really doing? It's got to be a misunderstanding. I mean, adults. That well, we know it's a misunderstanding. The, the <laughs> reason why we know it's a misunderstanding is the same way a lot of our people believe, without no evidence, that they're African Americans. And that was given to us, just like a lot of this misinformation. 
on non-tax and status correction, a lot of the majority of it is misdirection. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, it's misdirection. And they're doing this based the percentage that they're saying, the return percentage, they're going off of the lowest possible percent. So this doesn't yeah. mean that the percentage that the return percentage that comes back will so low be maybe greater. Yeah, they lowballed it. Just to, yeah. Yeah. That's not I mean, how do you way. think? How do you think they know how many people did not participate in an election or census? Because they know how many people in the country. Do you really think you can't sneak a toothbrush on an airplane? You think they don't know who's in the country? Come on, man. I mean, it's time to put the childish things away and get realistic. You know what? This is an example where it says about Funrise. This is an example where the the statement you made earlier, if we don't do it, somebody else will. So yeah, you're company, looking at it. Yeah. This company was founded in 2012. Funrise experienced team, experienced team of 64 professionals manage eight real estate investment vehicles publicly reporting to the SEC. Board members and key institutional backers include Silverstein Properties, World Trade Center owner developer, Oak Pacific Investments, and Guggenheim Partners. Fundrise invested in, invested in, manages, or owns over $2.3 billion in real estate nationwide with over $426 million in aggregated funds raised across our program. So this this is an example of, okay, y'all don't want to do it, so we gonna do it. Came together and they this is this is what they 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 created. This is what they established. And so when you're wondering when they're coming to your community, investing in them building it up for their own people, you know why? Because it's their investment. And I'm not saying that it's right. Well, to me, the solution is not to get mad, not to scream, do the same thing. That's how you stop them from buying your communities by us buying our communities first. Yeah. By us making sure we address our needs. If we took care of our own needs in our community, who can come in and provide anything? Who? People are able to come in our communities and sell our own goods back to us because we allow it. Hmm. Again, the majority of us are dying to be Europeans. Better Europeans than the actual Europeans. Like working nine to five just to go get a pair of European shoes. Ooh, ooh. Uh, hey, don't kick, don't kick them under the bed. I saw you. Now, I don't think the ancestor was walking around c- concerned on what the logo is on your feet. The last I remember, our ancestors fought their whole lives not to wear brands on their body and not to be branded. And we work our whole lives and die just to wear brands. Mm. Yeah, I said it. What's the difference between being branded with a piece of iron than wearing a Nike check on your chest? Mm. Ain't that somebody logo, somebody brand, somebody else's staple? It's on your body. Or somebody logo on your back. And then we brag about it. How we got the latest, the newest, the flyers. But it can't even get us past tomorrow. It's crazy. The 
that they know us so well that they can come out, put LeBron James on a pair of sneakers and charge $400 and we'll break our necks to go get it. Not this one. I ain't going to do it. He ain't been to my house. He ain't took me to the grocery store. I'm just saying. That's just me. That's what we keep saying it again. As a community, we have to make better choices. We have to actually sit down and look at how we invest our money, how we should invest our money, where we should invest our money. Because again, money is a tool. Money is meant to work for you. What has your money done for you lately? Where have you put it so that it can bring something back? If all you ever do is spending money, then you're not even using it for what it's designed for. How many millionaires and billionaires we've heard nowadays are finally saying things out loud that they don't work for money, their money works for them? Yep. Your money better work for you because if you're working for the money, you always going to be on the bottle. Yep. We are, uh, I saw this somewhere. I can't remember where. I think uh, Shout Out to Giovanni showed me. Uh, that's her. I'm about to give her an ad. <laughs> her YouTube channel. Shout Out to Giovanni. Um, but I'm trying, let me see if I can remember without butchering it. He, the dude was saying, um, we're, we're pretty much <clears throat> trained to go and spend money. We're trained to go and purchase stuff. Um, and we're not trained to the purchase money. Not, this, this is what it, I, this is what it is. We're not trained to purchase money. We're not. We're supposed to be buying money, not buying things. Because if you're buying money, you're pretty Say much. Say it again one more time. Say it again one more time. We're not supposed to be buying things. You should be buying money. You should be buying things that make you money. So if you're buying a brand new car off the lot, is that making you money? Nope. Or are you spending money? You're buying things. But if you purchase uh, when you a drive business, it off a lot, it appreciates in value. If you purchase a when business, is the business supposed to be positive on the positive end eventually? Mm -hmm. If you purchase a stock, it's supposed to be on the positive end. You're not supposed to be purchasing things that are depreciating in value immediately. Like Bone said, off the lot, you're done. You buy a pair of shoes, first put them thing on, I what learned you gonna do for a refund. My first two years of running a business was if you spend a dollar and you can't make a dollar back from that, you made a bad decision, business-wise. Mm. Wow. Well. <laughs> and that came from your president. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I wonder which one, the one right now, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the one in office right now. Yeah, didn't he write a book? He wrote a book, I believe, I forgot. Yep, it's in there. <laughs> Man, oh man. Yeah, man. Purchasing things is not the thing for real. It hasn't ever been. That's why we have the purchase power. We purchase things. We spend the most money on things. We don't spend the most money on investments. That's not a stat for us. The stat yeah, is the we things that the we spend money. the majority of the money on have no power and they're irrelevant, worthless trash. That is think crazy. about it. TVs, crazy. phones, sneakers, jewelry, rims, music. Automobile. Come on, man. I mean, look at it to the point. If you look at the consumer senses, they know exactly what we're gonna buy and when we're gonna buy it. Come on, <laughs> better than we do. You a statistic? Well, we've been a statistic. Hold on. Statistic. So, <clears throat> um, let me go back up here. Fifty-seven percent. Mm -hmm of all neighborhoods in America were up for consideration as opportunity zones. 50% of 57% of all neighborhoods in America were up for consideration as opportunity zones. Hold on. I wonder, how, that small neighborhoods or I wonder of how many of them are all out of them 57%. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> So even so going because <laughs> even if we're half of that, if the so-called African American, the descendant of the Indian, is twenty-five percent of that fifty-seven percent, there goes that thirteen percent of the population. Hmm. Now, wow. eat this. That number's out the window. 
this sounds like the new housing developments. A 24 story, 402 unit apartment tower is set to open near MacArthur BART station in 2020. Yeah, if you let them, if we let them build for us, they're gonna build cages. And I'm calling it how I see it. They're gonna build cages and put us in the box. Mm-hmm. If we allow them to build it. They in created my- the ghetto to put our ancestors in. And mm-hmm. we're gonna allow them to keep doing it. We're not gonna take the initiative and build quality housing, comfortable, affordable housing for our people, realistic housing. We're gonna keep letting people put us in, in, in boxes and dumps. Come on, man. Building us, building us, building our communities around electrical plants and waste facilities. Come on. Yeah, this is for California. This is in the Los Angeles area. From 2013 to 2018, they've already, from the things that they've built up, re um, re renovated and everything, they've already seen a 32% increase in prices. In addition, what had me tripping is, in addition to homes, commercial, they have 10 freeways that have received opportunity zone designations as well. Freeways. Freeways. Don't freeways run through our communities, split our neighborhood. Yes, they Mm. do. Look, check it out. So remember on the overview, what we read on the HUD, um, the HUD PDF, uh, Bones, that's going to be in the the PDF section on the... um, yeah, the PDF form or section is up on the website. Uh, after the show, I'll upload uh, all the PDFs from the day. Word. All right, so in the overview, that number one under the uh, the, f- <clears throat> the roadmap being organized around the four imperatives, number one was understand needs and opportunities in opportunity zones. And it says communities, just the first sentence, communities must have a deep understanding of the needs and challenging, challenges within their opportunity zones to properly leverage potential public and private investments. So you need to know what's going on. I mean, like Bone said, you're gonna let them build for you. Hmm. You're gonna let them build what they deem is necessary for you in your area or you just gonna- Grand Rising, Power 10 Peace, peace, peace. Grand Rising, peace. But yeah. And again, it's not as hard as it seems or how they have it written out. Your numbers and statistics, they already did the work for you. All you got to do is get your local census numbers to find your population. You can find out the communities, the conditions. You can hit the IRS in, uh, search engine and you can see if they're labeled. Low income communities. You can have all this information before you even sit down to even put your proposal and business plans together. Everything we need is right in front of our face. We just have to use it for ourselves and stop letting people use it for us. Yep. It gets no sense than that. Another example, Amazon alone plans to expand from 8 million to 12 million square feet of office space. This is Seattle, Washington. Which mm-hmm. will surely attract new residents and drive greater demand for housing and businesses. This is Amazon. So basically, basically, these corporations, like we see, get the moving areas where we at, buy up the land, rebuild, raise the price to where we got to move someplace else, and they bring their own in. Six new condo buildings set to open in the city by 2020, still in Seattle, Washington. What's the difference between us and Amazon right now? Us as communities and Amazon. What's the difference? Organization. Yeah. We okay. get ourselves organized. We get constitution and bylaws together. We construct it to where it's designed for these entities to do what we set them forward to do. We can do the same. And the more and more we read, the more companies that we pull up that's doing this, this is proof that it can be done, it has been done, and it will continue to be done. The question is, who gonna do it for us? Is it gonna be the Indian, or is it gonna be the colonizers? But make no mistake about it, it will get done, one way or another. Mm. 
Hmm. You know what? Yeah. These are examples of, yeah, if we, if we don't do it, somebody else will. And obviously somebody else will has already started. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that in a way to make it sound like a race, but I mean, now we know. We may have not known before, but now we know. But that's the race that they created and taught us to look at people as descriptions. But no, they turned it into a race and we are behind. We were purposely mm -hmm. kept behind. We are the fuel for the engine because as long as we consume, we put everybody else on. But what happens the moment, the moment we stop being a consumer, we start producing, we go back to our ancestors' ways, you know? Our ancestors were conservative. The Indians didn't kill just to kill. They didn't take something just to take. If they had to kill a buffalo or something, they made sure they used every part of it. If they had to fish for something, they made sure they used every part of it. Conservative. Put away for tomorrow. Save for the future. When you consume, that's all you ever do. And the problem with consuming is, is what? That's gluttony. You're going to eat and consume so much to the point you get nothing done and leave nothing behind but a mess. Come on, brothers and sisters. We can change this direction. We can do this together. Not walking in front or behind each other, on top or under each other. Men and women, and we walk side by side each other and get this done. Time ain't waiting. And these other entities, the ones that don't like you, the ones that really mean you harm, they have no intention on slowing down. So the best thing that we can do is defend ourselves by protecting home, by making sure we own our communities, our neighborhoods, by making sure that we build them and make sure they're safe. Stop depending on others. Dependency shows us where it got us. Nowhere. We're in a worse situation than our ancestors was because we came too dependent. I got to stop sharing for a minute. So my. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to switch the screen. Thank you. Give me a second. I mean, again, there are solutions, there are ways. And these are ways that you can access where you don't have to look over your shoulder. You don't have to worry about getting your doors kicked in. You don't have to worry about making yourself a foreigner or detaching yourself away from your ancestors' homeland, your true home. You can make yourself a foreigner bounce. Yes, oh, you can make yourself giving a up your social security number and all that stuff. The right? moment, the moment that you turn in your birth, your birth certificate and social or security, authenticated. Or authenticated, you are making yourself a foreigner. I mean, these are not. A2's words. This is not A2's interpretation. This is coming directly from the United States government. It doesn't matter how you feel. When they already have said people who are doing this, they're going to label you as a sovereign citizen. Whether you agree to it or not, it doesn't matter. It's kind of funny. Everybody claiming the teacher, but last night read the court case of the teacher and he's still on the run. This madness needs to stop. Oh, man. Does, man. does the teacher have a name? Oh, you know, I'm like my brother James. Yusuf, cut it out. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all done never done it. That's the teacher? That's what people bragging who taught him. But don't even know this man on the run from the court. <laughs> I say it's time for this childish madness to stop, and it's time for us to take our seat at the grown-up table and get this done.
Again, ain't nobody else that's stopping it but us. How can it be stopped when you constantly see billions of being dropped into these programs and the only thing missing is us? Not because somebody's keeping us away, because we're not going to go get it. King Ben told us, King Ben told us, I made it to the mountaintop. I can't go to the other side to you, but I made it and I seen it. Now, how in the world we get to the other side and we lay down? Can somebody please explain this to me? We were told before we even got here, before we were even conceived, we were born on the other side of the mountaintop and been laying down with our feet kicked up. Come on, man. We became exactly who these people told us that we were going to become. Sell out to our own people. Mm. We became the agents. Whether willingly or unwillingly, we became the Indian agents. It went from being selected handpicked people till they just converted us all into the agents. No, you ain't real. You fake. Look, look at the labels and stuff that we put on each other. Just growing up. Look at how we isolated from each other. Look at how we start breaking down and separate each other by physical descriptions, hair color, physical features, height, weight, size. We do it more than anybody else to ourselves. Oh my goodness. Okay. So sorry. Don't mean to interrupt. Drop it like it's hot. All right. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, my computer was moving slow, so I had to shut down some windows and didn't really want to, but had to happen. So I got to thinking because I started thinking when I looked at that um, Fundrise website, when they were showing the areas, um, they were showing the areas that, that were opportunity zones. What I found curious was that those areas were that orangish tan color. So then I got to thinking, what if those opportunity zones, because we've been, we've been looking at maps me and double cousin, we've been looking at maps, looking at what's eligible and what's ineligible. Now we, we noticed that the ineligible areas were mainly in the cities, the major cities. Like metros so and things I wanted like to that. see the opportunity zone maps. Those are cities. Those are the same areas that are ineligible for, for the USDA. Uh, correct. And then it, I, I started thinking, okay, these, el these areas are ineligible for the USDA, but they are eligible for HUD funding establishing programs. And CDBG's so number too, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so CDBG's, then, yeah. Okay, yeah. So then I started thinking about um, the census, and then I started thinking about um, um, the rezoning and Congress and the elected officials that we don't pay attention to. We're thinking about the president, but we're not thinking about the... I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of us don't think about, okay, um, our city council, Congress and all that. So then I started thinking about, okay, when we're having officials elected, who they represent, they're talking about rezoning, redistricting and all that. And I just realized, I'm gonna go ahead and show my screen, um, that the map for the opportunity zones matches the same map that is ineligible for USDA, but eligible for HUD for establishing businesses and programs. I'm just saying. I don't know nothing. I don't know everything. I'm gonna say <laughs> I don't know everything, but if I'm wrong in what I'm seeing, just tell me. I'll stop talking and I'll stop clicking. I'll stop Basically, clicking. what this shows you is no matter where you are, there's a program. Mm -hmm. If one don't cover your area, there's another one that do. And some areas are overlapped by four or five of them. Yep. Hold on, wait a minute. So you're saying that if you got an idea, there's a program, a grant, or a loan for that. And if you're in an area in America, it's probably okay. See this map? Think about it. Why would you need opportunity zones in rural areas? You wouldn't. Right. You would need the opportunity zones in your metropolitan areas, your larger yep. cities. Yep. Where we were at and put in areas to purposely bring the property value down.
And I mean, look at some of these like neighborhoods, some of these cities. Some of us have ancestors that have been living in these cities 50, 60, 70 years. Yep. Some of them moved there on the creation of these cities. So some of these, some of our families owned a lot of the property in these cities. So what happens when you drop the property event down? You close out the mom and pop stores. You bring in the Walmarts. You bring in the other corporations. Now these people who once owned their neighborhoods have to pack up and leave. And that's how you get the, rem the remnant of the American Indians land that you don't have now. 56% of Opportunity Zone residents in the 50 states plus DC are minorities compared to 54% of the population of all LICs and 38% for the country as a whole. Over three- One more time. I'm sorry. One more, one more time. Um, 50, Nippers. Right. And this is going off of the American Community Survey, five-year estimates between 2011, right after the 2010 census, to 2015, because they do have a yearly census. 56% of Opportunity Zones residents in the 50 states plus DC are minorities compared to 54% of the population of all LICs and 38% for the country as a whole. Over three quarters of the certified tracks lie within metropolitan areas, but Opportunity Zones are nearly e evenly split between high density urban in parentheses zip codes and low density rural in parentheses ones with the remaining 22% in medium density suburban in parentheses communities. Many states included explicit set aside set asides for tribal areas resulting in 294 opportunity zones that contain Native American lands proportional to their share of eligible LICs, this definition is slightly broader than the exclusive tribal census tracts, which the Urban Institute studied. Why is the Urban Institute studying Indians? Hmm, why is the Urban Institute? Urban, ain't that you? And I wonder. And then I mentioned a, a way to get a whole lot of Indian land that they don't have already. Ooh. Why opportunity zones are for important for Indian country opportunity zones, the tax incentives for investment in poor and undercapitalized communities that were included in the tax cuts and job act did not go unnoticed to Indian country. Governors in 26 states have named census tracts that include tribal areas of 481 tribal of 481 tribal census tracts across the country, 248 or 52% are, are in at least one census tract eligible for opportunity zone designation. All 248 received at least one opportunity zone designation. This analyst includes all opportunity zone tracts that have been approved by the U.S. Treasury as well as proposed tracts awaiting approval. Of the 1,341 census tracts eligible for selection in tribal areas, 30% were picked. So tribal areas fared well in opportunity zone designations. Now, my question would be how many upper councils and tribes have informed tribal members of this, that they can invest in their tribal areas? Oh, that's just a good one question. I mean, is it like, is it going to be like Pinecrest receiving HUD and government funding for uh, for home construction, but the reservation is the most homeless in there? Because the people that were put in charge are not taking care of the people. I mean, I'm going to keep it 100. That's what hey, we do here. That's what we do here. So, I mean, how many other <laughs> how many other situations are like that? Yeah, that they have a manufactured know, that we don't home. Know about. The tribe owns a manufactured home, but the tribal members, well, yeah, manufacturing home plant, but the tribal members don't benefit from it. The reservation don't benefit from it. 
because the tribal leaders decided to build these homes and sell it to retail people instead of taking care of their own people. Now imagine if these leaders actually did it for the people. There shouldn't be homelessness. There shouldn't be no one going hungry. It's like this by design. Greed. So they quick to talk about the ones that have casinos. But what about the ones you never see on the news? The ones that don't have casinos. The one that leads the nations in poverty. What about them? It's kind of like they're still cherry picking the tarot romance stories. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Romance Hold success on. stories. I need to. Nope, I can pull that point. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to, I just wanted, I didn't want to lose that page because I want to go back through their numbers that they were talking, um, that they were breaking down. Okay, no problem. But like we're going to keep saying, it's proof that it has been done, it is being done, and it can be done. I mean, when people keep saying that they need to see things, I mean, all you got to do is walk outside your house. You see the proof all around you in your neighborhood. Anytime you go to a Walmart, that's proof. Anytime you see an NFL, NBA, baseball, that's proof. Anytime you see the military, that's proof. This is the um, bar graph. So the green is the eligibility threshold. The blue is the average of all LICs. And then the tannish orange is average of all um, opportunity zones. So up here where they have, they said the average opportunity zone has a median family income equal to only 59% of its area median compared to the 80% eligibility threshold. On average, the unemployment rate in these communities is 14.4% and 38% of the prime age adults are not working, a figure that is nearly 10 points higher than the country as a whole. Hmm. And I bet these are areas that they made sure over time that access to resources were limited hmm. or none as whatsoever. Yeah, it says, furthermore, 69% of the population in opportunity zones resides in a census tract that is severely distressed, according to the CDFI fund, meaning in a community with especially high poverty or unemployment rates or especially low medium family incomes. Um, in Florida in particular, nearly 94% of Opportunity Zone residents live in such a tract, and in Georgia, that number spikes to over 99%. Yeah, basically all of Georgia and basically all of Florida falls up under this. You'll be surprised what the median is for your area, like we learned. There's people living in areas that's making $100,000 a year, and they low income because of the cost of living or where they live. You'll be shocked to what's considered low income. Well, this is breaking it down. This says because of the wide latitude afforded governors in the selection process, some observers worried they would simply target already gentrifying areas that had little need for a new incentive to attract investment. However, less than 4% of opportunity zones experienced high levels of socioeconomic change. From 2000 remember. to 2000. Go ahead. And, and remember what happened. Remember, let's go back to 2000. Let's go back to the Obama years. Do y'all remember when they changed the whole tax bracket with the tax mm-hmm. breaks right before Bush and them? The middle yeah. class tax breaks start at a quarter million dollars. Mm-hmm. So if you're not making a quarter million dollars a year, what does that mean? You ain't making it. If the middle class got raised to a quarter million dollars a year, with the tax changes. What does that mean for everybody that's up under that? 
Yeah. Think about it. A person making a hundred thousand dollars a year, but your house is five hundred thousand or four hundred thousand. Ouch. <laughs> and that's home ownership. Look at what it costs for some people to pay rent in some of these areas. You mean throw away money? Listen, I learned firsthand. I moved from Florida. A three two in Florida compared to a three two here. Mortgage here, four sixty eight a month. There, fifteen a month. Dramatic change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying to like say, does the scale even work after that? <laughs> <laughs> It says, like, why you move? I'm like, why not move? Why not? <laughs> this says, what elements did states incorporate into their zone selection process? So the gray is unknown, or the dark gray is no, the light gray is unknown, and the orange is the peach. There it is. Peach is yes. Created websites describing state process provided a mode, and that was 30, provided a mode for public input, that was 33 to 18, consulted with local authorities, 47, consulted with potential investors, 36, consulted with nonprofit community organizations, 39, consulted with national experts and advisors, 40, formed a citizen advisory panel, 10, published draft selections for public comment, five. Instituted geographic proportionality requirements, 21. Conducted an intricacy process, 33. Conducted additional analytics, 43. Engaged in peer learning sessions with other states, 35. Responded to survey, 40. States consulted extensively with their municipalities, counties, and local regional economic development organization. Now, how many of them numbers represent us? Hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? By looking at the numbers, we're, well, we already know we're not applying because a lot of us are just learning about this information. Right. But that means the next, the next following your numbers, they should be tripled. Because uh, many of us that know this information now, we should be beating down the dough. Facts. I mean, there should be no room for new paper print because we're putting out so many proposals in our communities. To the point, revitalize the newspaper chain off of it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Come on with it. Got an idea? Like, oh, they're reading again. Newspaper back. <laughs> there it is. I mean, again, and remember, your business does not have to be in the area that you are investing in. Mm -hmm. You just have to invest. There's no special commission or nothing that you have to go find and get permission from to invest in your community. trying to tell me there's something wrong with investing in. Think about this. All you are doing is investing in yourself and you're making a profit by investing in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself enough to invest in you, ain't nobody going to do it. I mean, we don't believe strongly in ourselves to invest in ourselves. I'm not saying take your money, give it to somebody else. No. You, we go out and we find the needs in our communities and we get with like-minded people and we form these institutions and we invest in them. Hmm. 
And at the same time, look at the business sets and skills that we start bringing into our community. Look at the things that we are into now as adults. How did we get there? Because we was influenced as children. It's things that we were around and grew up around as children. So now imagine we start bringing in the information of business portfolios, financial portfolios, long-term, short-term investments, CDs, different ways on how you can put your money to work for you. Hmm. Yes, we got, we got started late, but our children don't have to. We can break down this information, apply and teach our children along the way. So not only do they understand what it is, how it works, they develop the skill set along the way to maintain it once our time has came and gone. Or what, we just gonna sit here, put some stuff together and let them figure it out? little map I mean again if something's wrong with the lifestyle and the environment then you change the lifestyle and the environment yep okay I gotta stop sharing again give me a second what's Sharon doing and why you gotta stop her oh shut up <laughs> I didn't even know Sharon was here I ain't, yeah, I ain't hear the doorbell at all. Oh, wait. Y'all didn't know I was Sharon? I think Sharon I came mean, no. Window. You know what? I just caught it. Never mind. I'm done. <laughs> Never mind. I am done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you the partner in the egg toss that was looking down for a second, and I already threw the egg. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. Your head was down. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention at all. <laughs> you walked right into that one. Yeah, I, I think I did. I caught that one. My little mouse is, is thinking again. I mean, if that's what we got for this rise, then we can go ahead. Let everyone get their day uh, on the way. A lot of people I know looking forward to uh, start getting into these sites, looking at these programs. Yep. Yeah. Better wrap that gavel up, up Pete. What you got for them? Well, this is what I got. Keep on your genealogical journey. That is always important. That won't ever go away along with many things. So know who you are so that no one can tell you who you are. Um, it's important so that you know who you are, have conversations, even with family. You know, discover new things, um, expand on, you know, the things that you find out, but still just continue on your gene genealogical journey. Know who you are so that no one can tell you who you are. You may find out some things that, you know, are great, whatever it is. It's just, just know it. Um, since this is coming up April 1st, Make yourself count so that you can count. It doesn't just affect you. It affects others around you. It affects your community. It affects, um, <laughs> it affects people that we vote for, um, politicians, um, Congress. It affects who represents you, who represents us. Um, so yeah, and look into the yearly census, the ACL, and I hope I'm not getting those letters wrong. That's a yearly census. That census, they look to get, I think it's like 658,000 people to volunteer to take that yearly census. So, you know, volunteer to take that yearly census and uh, make yourself count again so that you count. Um, there are programs for programs for programs. There are opportunities for opportunities for opportunities of funding for your thoughts. If you can think it, I'm pretty sure there's a program for it. And if there's not a program for it, create a program 
to get funding for that program so that others can benefit from that program. <laughs> I know it sounds redundant saying the same thing over and over, but yeah, I mean, I filled out an application for one program for continued education, um, training and understanding, and that funding will go towards a program that will be beneficial to this community. So this is not something I'm just saying, this is actually something that I'm doing. And I know that it's worth it. It's worth it. There are some realizations that it's not a handout. And I've said this before, but even with myself, this is not a handout, this is help. And I'm okay with this help. I'm okay with this help. So ask questions, fill out forms, pull information. Um, yeah, get actively involved, get out there. City council meetings, um, who your state representatives are, all those things. We are all connected to all those things, all the different surveys, census, all these things will keep happening. Change will keep happening whether we participate or not. Me personally, I'd rather participate so that I can affect how the change is. If it's for me, against me, for us, against us, I want to participate so I can contribute. I'm just saying. So, peace to the panel, peace to the chat, peace to the silent majority. Shout out to Double Cousin for the wise words of wisdom. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay this has been said before but even a record burns a needle opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work <laughs> why is opportunity dressed like that I don't, I don't know if I rock with opportunity it's a little scary to me Every right implies a responsibility, every opportunity and obligation, every possession a duty. Healing is a matter of time, but it is sometimes also a matter of opportunity. The reward for work well done is opportunity to do more. If you are not egotistical, you will welcome the opportunity to learn more. And if opportunity does not knock, make a door. Peace to the panel, peace to the chat, peace to the silent majority. We can do this. I'm just saying. All right. What you got for no sell out? Well, my question is, did opportunity knock when she said that? Well, I'm not sure. All right. I thought I heard a notification or something. That might have been. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. I ain't, you know, I, ain't, I don't do much. I ain't, I ain't doing nothing. Um, peace to the chat peace to the panel peace to uh, the entire autonomous assembly man questions, comments, concerns and or corrections hit us up at autonomousassembly at gmail.com uh, hit us up on the zoom link or the dial in number that we have listed if you have any questions um, yeah tap into these programs man i mean don't put your family in danger trying to separate from the government that's all i gotta say peace y'all oh one, right. more. one more real quick money hold on is you gonna have one more at the this end of the show too? no 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 this is it i just saw this one and i was like oh okay bones i'll be trying it. to close out with peace y'all and you'd be like oh, oh, oh one sixteen okay more. i won't do it no more ever again 14 ever, ever again but just okay just 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 three more i'll just do three more three more <laughs> <laughs> money is worth nothing if it can't buy you opportunity Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah oh man you, you know what uh, okay you know what if you have one more after after i say peace y'all you can you can have that one because that was okay. heavy right there 
Okay. <laughs> I, I figured you liked that one. I was like, yeah, no way. That was okay. similar to what I was trying to, what I was stumbling over earlier about buying money instead of buying mm -hmm. things. Buy income is what I meant. I don't like the, the word money too much. Buy income. Buy your income. Don't be purchasing things. But go ahead. That, that was just, yeah. <laughs> All right. Once again, thank you, No Sellout and Gabrielle, for the work you put in to make the show what it is. Thanks to Active Chat and the Solid Majority, because again, it takes all parties coming together to make this possible. And again, this is another day of where we went over the Opportunity Zones, yet another program that we can use to fix our conditions, yet another program to where we can see what happens when others access these programs in our communities. So again, the question is, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose to make a difference by taking action and being active in our communities? Or are we going to choose to let it remain the same and choose to leave this mess on our children to figure out? Again, Yes, we came up through a system to where a lot of information was kept from us, or we didn't know where to look, or people were put in front of us to keep us away from it. But this day, we are aware. So what are we going to do? We can choose to take this time to go over these programs and start reaching in our communities and seeing what we can change. Or we can turn a deaf ear and a blind eye and allow our communities to disappear forever. What's the sense in having a life, being aware, if you choose nothing, if you choose not to do anything whatsoever? What's the sense in having legs to move, but when you need it to move the most, you don't? A voice to speak, but when you need to be heard, you choose to remain silent. Hands that can build, but you keep them by your side when they need it the most. We all have a skill set that individually against the system don't stand a chance. But these skill sets, when we choose to come together as community, as brothers and sisters, as the remnants of the American Indian, we can accomplish anything. We've all read of the great works of our ancestors. When are we gonna put the books down and start building our great works for our future generations? When are we gonna set them down to entertainment, the cancerous lifestyle, to leave a reminder for all lost children, all lost generations can have that beacon to find their way back home like that was given to us. How can we be given this opportunity and choose not to pass it forward? Brothers and sisters, this is a great time for us. We have the pen in our hand and the pad in front of us. Now the question is, what will our history say? So on that note, continue to work in your communities. Continue to put your best foot forward to doing everything in your life that you possibly can to leave it better than what it was when you got here. Continue to work on genealogy. So the history of the American Indian of all descendants will never be forgotten. And let's remember that the world is a stage hmm. and that above it all, our creator is watching us. And in the end, he will ask us with the opportunity that we were given, what did we do? Hmm. Should we link up to the next rising show? Remember, we love you and peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, y'all. I do got one more.
You know what? You could have just said it instead of saying peace, but it's all right. I said you could say one more after peace. Okay. After you know, <laughs> you ever again. I got one more. Oh, Lord, I never straight. <laughs> we must open the doors of opportunity, but we must also equip our people to walk through those doors. Part of, part of our heritage in this society is the opportunity be, to become financially independent. There you go. I'll take it. <laughs> While we do what we do, 365. <laughs> and on that note, we gone. <laughs> yeah. Warning, 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 hard hats, pickaxe, shovels, boots, required.